Welcome to Deep Thought. Many people fight for acceptance. I'm going to tell you what, that's, you know, I talked about community the, on Tuesday. But many people, many people fight for acceptance. And what do I mean by acceptance? They want to be accepted by others. They want to be accepted by the group, you know. And it's, a, it's not as bad now because, as I said, with uh, social media, it's easier for people to find a like-minded community. But it's still that drive. Sometimes you might not be able to find that community. It might exist, but it could be something small. You can't really find it. But I say from the time we are born, we really fight for acceptance. Now, hopefully, some, most of us get accepted in our families. Not always, though. And I, I feel really bad for those people. They don't feel accepted there. But, you know, we go to school. We want to be accepted. You know, we're on the job. We want to be in the in group. We had college. We want to be in the in group. We want people, we want to be a part of community to the point that people will actually fight for it. They want to be accepted. I mean, if you look at um, different societies, um, you'll have a dominant group, a racial group, or a ethnic group, or a religious group. And many people who aren't a part of that group, because of the dominant group, they have tried to even go as far as to change their own physical features or adapt them just to be accepted. Just to be accepted. That's a major thing. I'll use a racial example in the United States. Many, many black people will change their hair, change their nose. Uh, we don't have as bigger problem in this country anyway of skin bleaching or anything, but many other countries they do. What's it for? Acceptance. Acceptance is what they perceive as the dominant culture, you know? Or oh, how many people, if they're in certain neighborhoods, you know, you get some guys out here, they might have gotten tattoos to be accepted or behave certain ways to be accepted, you know? Maybe the dominant group in a school or something or in a neighborhood is a street gang or something. How many people or, you know, have changed everything about them? Like, and like I said, it can go along different ways. I remember a guy, he was a nice guy too. He was a... His ethnicity was Irish, Irish American, but he started hanging around with some Muslims, some Muslims, Middle Eastern Muslims, and they accepted him. They accepted him, but I noticed something. He actually colored his hair and his whole speech intonation changed. I was like, what? Hey, he was a good guy otherwise. He was a good guy. He was a really good guy, a better person, but before that, I don't think he was ever truly accepted by anybody. So he got around some guys who accepted him. And he's probably converted by now. Because, I mean, no, he was kind of, he had like, uh, I say light hair, just on the verge of being reddish. But all of a sudden, I mean, he dyed his hair all black and his speech intonation. I remember he was actually going through Ramadan, everything. And I thought about that. And it was like, because I remember how when he started hanging out with them. He was cool with him and everything, but he totally, totally. But what did they do? Accept him. Now, that was a group that accepted him willingly, but people can get in trouble when they're not accepted by the group they want to be accepted by. And it can happen in any situation. You know, the cool kids won't let you sit at their table. The dominant racial group won't accept you. The dominant spiritual group won't accept you. It could be whatever, whatever, you know. Or you could be a kid at a private school who's there on scholarship and the rich kids won't accept you. It could be so many things and many people fight for that. But what are they really fighting for? They fighting for a community. See, that's why I say, you know, let's bring this back around when I was talking about community. That's why it's a good thing. Like I said, the one thing I really love about social media, it gives people a place they can go. Ultimately, they can find others who will take them as they are. Because one of the greatest things is to be accepted as you are. You don't have to change everything. You don't have to do it. Now, you do have some people, they feel so good and so strong in themselves, they like whatever. Whatever. And they use, shoot, you know, people like that usually become the leaders of some communities or something. But a lot of people ain't like that. Because, like I said, most, pe most people are built to follow. Most people 
want to be in community. We want to be a part of the herd, the, uh, the pack, the tribe. I mean, indeed, you know, in indigenous cultures where they still have a rites of passage, uh, it's a big deal when you fully accept it as an adult. You fully accept it as a warrior. Uh, for the women, fully accept it as a woman. It's a big deal because you're accepted. You know, I remember there was a guy I went to high school with, good guy. And I remember he wrote, um, it was like a little short story. I forgot where it was from one of our writing classes. And he was talking about when he played a game of basketball. He was playing in a game of basketball, right? There's a couple incidents with that. He was a real good guy, but it just struck me. He said when he was playing, he was talking about his moves. And then when he, he hit the jump shot, he hit the jump shot. And he said when he hit that jump shot in, in his poem or story, whatever it was, he said, I felt accepted. He was like, hey, good shot. Accept it. That's how deep it is. And I actually remember another time when he hit a shot in this intramural game I was watching. I didn't really know him well at the time, but he hit a shot in a game. And uh, I remember uh, about a year after that, he was still talking about that one shot. Maybe the poem came from that. I don't know. But acceptance, that's how deep it is. Like we want to feel like we're accepted. You know, we want to feel like it. That's why people might change gyms. I know of this guy who changed the gyms he was going to. And I ain't going to call his name. I don't know if he wants me talking about him. But he said he felt better at this one gym that I'm at now than he did at this other particular gym. He said he just felt more comfortable. He felt accepted. You know, many of us need that. We all need that. We all need to be a part of that group. All of us, all of us, even Ron. And, you know, it's great to be around like-minded individuals. We all need that. We all need our spiritual family, you know? To the point, people are willing to fight for it. And then the people who are in that group, you know, they will actively try to keep them out because, you know, people want to feel like their groups are exclusive and everything. Yeah, okay. All right. But, you know, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing, because we need it so badly. And in fact, sometimes people will dangle that acceptance as a, you know, they say, hey, if you do this, we'll accept you. That's how, like, you've had movements betrayed, uh, people who turn against their own family and all of that because this other group accepts them. And you see that a lot. You see, you see that dynamic so much if you just, like, kind of sit back and pay attention. You know, sometimes uh, a couple people, I know of a situation, a couple of women were like the best of friends, but then one of them got accepted kind of by like a new social circle. Now the two don't talk, but that the one who got into the new social circle, uh, for what I understand, she always wanted uh, a thing. She always wanted to be accepted by certain people. So now she got it. That's how deep it is. People will fight for it. They can leave the true people, even to the point they'll leave the people who already accepted them. That's how deep it is. Who always accepted them as they were, appreciated them, loved them as they were, because they think dealing with this other group is better. To relationships, people, relationships have broken up over that. Over that, you know? You get some people, they might join a new organization. It could be a spiritual organization, whatever. And they had all these friends who already accepted them, but deep down they wanted this other group. They wanted this other thing. That's how deep it is. And then they actually leave the group that accepted them. It's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, it's deep. Because as I'm talking about it, because I, you know, I, usually when I have subjects for any of my videos, I'll just write down a title and just flow with it. You know, it's rare I write down notes, very rare. I just write down a title and go with it. But this one, I'm thinking about a lot of incidents. Some people, a lot of people I've known personally, a lot of people I've known personally who might have walked through because on a deep level, they wanted acceptance by a certain group of people. And it, that gets deep why they would. And like I said, it, this could be racial. This could be ethnic. This could be religious. This, this could be the cool kids who sit in the cafeteria 
whatever. They just want it so bad that they will actually walk away from the group who have actually accepted them because they want it by the other group. And you know what? It don't always turn out well. That's the, that's the unfortunate thing. But it's something for all of us to think about. All right. So anyway, that's all I have for today. I'll get back with y'all on Sunday. Until then, peace and blessings.